Hello everyone, this is Nirupama and welcome to Simplify. Today I'm going to talk about the gluten-free diet and if it is a science or a fad. So what is this going gluten-free all about? Is there a science behind it or is it just a fad? I would say both. Let's look at the science part of it first. What is gluten? Gluten is a mixture of proteins that is found particularly in wheat and in related cereals such as barley and rye. Gluten is what gives the dough its elasticity and the final product a chewy texture. So why did gluten come under so much scrutiny? There are three categories of gluten or wheat related diseases or disorders that brought gluten under scrutiny. The first one is the celiac disease. Celiac disease is an autoimmune disease where the individual's own body attacks its intestinal cells on consumption of gluten. The second one is wheat allergy. This one is not gluten specific and the individuals might be allergic to one of the hundred proteins in wheat. The third one is the non-celiac gluten sensitivity. About 2-6% to of the individuals suffer from this disorder and the mechanism is not very well understood. In case of all these three conditions, the individuals are advised to go on a strict gluten-free diet because of their inability to tolerate gluten. Now here comes the fad part. Every now and then, the food industries go on to the scheme of holding one component responsible for all the problems. Earlier it was fat, then sugar, and now it is gluten. Sadly, people easily buy into it. Increasing number of normal people with no allergies or gluten intolerances whatsoever are embarking on gluten-free diets because of the perception that gluten-free means healthy. But honestly, this perception has no serious scientific backing. Gluten-free diets are advised by some preachers because of the finding that gluten increases the gut permeability, causing symptoms like diarrhea and bloating. But there are several other factors that increase gut permeability such as spices or even stress. So why only blame gluten? Therefore, gluten-free diets might not be the solution to general intestinal problems and proper diagnosis and dietary planning are crucial. So here are three negatives of going on a gluten-free diet. Number one, calories. There's a common misconception that gluten-free equals low calories. So I myself decided to head to the supermarket and compare the gluten-free and the regular products. Here is the nutrition sheet comparison of the gluten-free carrot cake versus a regular carrot cake. The gluten-free carrot cake actually contains double the fat of the regular cake. Now this one is from a gluten-free pita bread versus a regular pita bread. Look at the fat and sugar levels. The gluten-free bread contains more sugar and more fat than the regular bread. This extra sugar and fat are added to the gluten-free products to make up for the taste and texture of these products. So if you are not being careful, your gluten-free products could lead to a higher intake of sugar and fat as compared to the regular products. The second downside of the gluten-free products is the price. Gluten-free products are more expensive than their regular counterparts and the industries promote these products as healthy because of the profit margins associated with them. Number 3. Nutrients If you are not being careful, in many cases the gluten-free products might be low in fibre, vitamins or minerals as the gluten-containing whole grains are an important source of these nutrients. Now, you must have come across people who do say that they feel better after going on a gluten-free diet and I believe that there could be a hundred reasons for that. Like maybe it could be the placebo effect you know, when people feel better because they psychologically believe in something? Or maybe that these people have actually replaced the junk food in the diet with more vegetables. Again, there is no scientific evidence that going on a gluten-free diet enables weight loss or anything of that sort. Lastly, I want to talk about a very interesting finding that was reported in the US. Researchers have speculated that the problem with gluten-related diseases and disorders might not be linked to gluten itself. It might be linked to a component in the herbicide that is used for maturing the wheat crops. Now this is very interesting research and might give the whole gluten-free topic a different turn. 
and it might require more government intervention with regard to the safety policies of the herbicides that are used rather than people just switching to gluten-free diets. So to conclude, I would say that gluten-free diets should be a medical choice and not a lifestyle choice. People with genuine reasons must avoid gluten in their diets, but going on the gluten-free bandwagon for no reason isn't going to make you feel healthier. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you guys liked it. Please like and comment on the video and subscribe to my channel by clicking right here.